I'm getting the fuzz bar. Hang on. Fuzz bar. (laughs) Well, we'll stop while he deals with the fuzz bar. Basically, it was recording from the wrong microphone. Now trying again. That's my favorite, like, 90s era cartoon villain right there is the fuzz bar. Okay. I'm Phil DeLuca. I'm Shivam Putt. (laughs) And we are Commanderin. I'm about to say, and we are commander in, and I laugh every time I'm about to say that because it's so freaking ridiculous. I don't know why. It is pretty ridiculous. It is. It's pretty ridiculous. Thanks for listening. (laughs) See, it's so ridiculous. We put a spotlight on community issues, but never, ever talk about three banned topics. Religion, politics, and Hearthstone. (laughs) (laughs) hey how about that uh we have a wonderful show lined up for you this week we have a preview card from unstable aptly named or perhaps we are i am being aptly unstable and uh but to talk about our card and the set a little bit and we're not going to be a very long show today but to talk about the card and the unstable set, we brought on an expert, none other than Mr. Gavin Verhey. What? Hey, everybody. It's great to be back on the show and talk about uh, Unstable. It's been so long, Gavin. It has, and I you just can't keep me away at this point, basically. <laughs> you know, when I'm when in, in, in my free time, I just think about what I want to do with my night. And I realized nothing is better than being on Commander. And so here oh, I am. That's sweet. <laughs> Listeners, we were setting up to record when we got the Skype call from Philadelphia because Gavin is calling from his hotel room at PAX Unplugged. Yeah, that's right. This episode is coming to you live from the dulcet small room in a little inn in Philadelphia <laughs> at about 1 a.m. Philadelphia time. Wow. And I'm so excited. I've been up for, I don't know, 48 hours at this point, and it is time for some commander, and that's for sure. All I'm saying is that there's <laughs> no better way to talk about unstable than when all three hosts are unstable. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we have various forms of sleep deprivation, sanity deprivation, because Shivam has been enjoying a full work week and a crazy, crazy social week. Kill um, me. And uh, I'm just back from Beijing and Hong Kong, and I accidentally fell asleep this uh, morning and afternoon, and so I'm still there. I'm not even getting off of the time zone difference. It's terrible. Well, (laughs) so we'll get to the unstable card, not just the unstable hosts and guest hosts. (laughs) We'd... (laughs) <laughs> we you know, love it if you'd like to hear I, more can of can it. i say something first all right so something about unstable i just want to put this into context for everybody i started working at wizards a little over six years ago and when i showed up unstable was already in design just putting that into context here so for it to finally come out after six plus years of toil and hard work and is this going to happen isn't it going to happen what are we going to put in this set, trying mechanics, discarding mechanics? I, I'm blown away by the community response so far. You guys really, really, really love this set, and it shows. So thank you so much for loving what we put so much energy into. It means a lot. Wow. Six years? Six plus years? Is that because the design team has been sort of fitting it in between other tasks? Just things were always changing. It, it was always wondering when the set was going to come out and just trying to find the best implementation of things possible. And and at different points, we thought different things might be possible based on the technology that would be around at the time. So, yeah, it it just took a a really really long time to get made. Actually, if you look at the credits for the design and development teams of the set, you'll note that many, many, many people who are on them no longer work at Wizards. 
and wow. many, many of the leads no longer work at Wizards. For example, the development team has had three leads. Um, Billy Moreno, for example, was the first lead, and he hasn't, hasn't been at Wizards in years. So <laughs> there's a frame of reference for you. That's incredible. Is this set the designer killer? This set has an unusual habit of making everyone who works on it go unstable. <laughs> <laughs> ben Rosewater survived, but, you know. But, I mean, he started there, right? So, Well, and I, I, know, I know Gavin would never say this. I have met Mark, and the man is, is somehow functionally unstable. It's beautiful. This set was made for him, by him, for us, to try to be him. And yeah. by the end of it, we're all going to be wearing flannel and just bouncing off the rooftops. A flannel with a t-shirt underneath. Amen. <laughs> no, no complaints here. <laughs> as, yeah, as Kevin looks down. <laughs> <laughs> but, you can't see it right now, but no, I'm actually just wearing like a vest and a collared shirt. I'm sorry. Really oh, unsurprising. Yeah. When he came down to Los Angeles uh, several weeks ago, not the most recent one, which maybe had a game played at night or by night, hmm. but he was very dapper when he came down. It was it was wonderful. He's definitely a well put together gentleman. Yeah. But before we continue, though, I would like to let the listeners who might still even be here, please, nope. please, listeners. Wherever you listen to this show, be it on iTunes, Stitcher, Podcast, whatever you do, give us a five-star rating. Let your friends know that we're here. That's the best way you can help us grow and give you more amazing things. Now, if you want to give us more tangible help, please go to patreon.com forward slash commander and MTG. Give us at the buck a show. It would do immeasurable joy and wonder for all of us <laughs> if we could get that mere tiny one less booster pack you buy a month. Give it to us instead, and then we can bring you even better things. Like, say, hosts who are not completely out of their minds <laughs> talking from our closets. <laughs> we would love to bring you more videos and more content. And we are fully, fully listener supported, and we appreciate each and every single one of you. If That's right. You one can help us. We appreciate it. And if you can't help us, just tell your friends that we're here and let them come and help us. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, one of the first things we would do, actually, is start uh, paying somebody to do professional-level uh, video editing. And um, we can't do that right now, which is why our videos on YouTube are so sporadically released. And They um, take a lot of time to put together, guys. And they're just slideshows because none of us are professional. Well, I'm not a professional video editor. so I haven't been a professional video editor in like a decade, and I don't yeah. have the tools anymore or the time. So please. So join us. Gavin in supporting the show at patreon.com slash commander and MTG. I talked about this a bit on the recent episode of it was just Shiva and I, but really as a content creator, as someone who has been that content creator, $1 goes so far. Just oh. putting in, if, a, if everyone listened to the, to the show, put in a dollar, the show could run for years without needing more support. So really it just think about how much that dollar really matters. And at, it's amazing. Just, you know, back at the bucket show level and I do it. You can totally do it, too. I highly recommend it. Wow, thank you. Yeah, you guys really ought to go back to the last episode Gavin was on and listen to that inspiring speech that made me want to contribute to my own Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's incredible, oh. and I'm so grateful for you to be on the show and joining us today. And if you can't contribute, then don't forget to visit us on YouTube and comment, rate, and subscribe our videos. Uh, and like Shivam said, if you just will rate us on uh, wherever it is you get your podcasts, we'd be much obliged. That really helps spread the word. So I, I remember, you know, even now and all the way back, I've been writing magic articles for 10, 15 years now. It's crazy. And every article I write, I know that thousands of people read it, but usually I'll get a handful of emails or a few tweets and those are the things that really make it so yes. wonderful and and worth doing. I mean, I, I would do it just to help contribute to the game as a whole, but it's really, really great to hear even that little bit from people about what you're doing. And um, you know, never heard to send an email saying, "Hey, what you did is what you did was awesome. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. It means a lot." 
Absolutely. I mean, that's that's such a great sentiment. We love getting your tweets, people. It really just fills us with incredible joy knowing that there are people listening and enjoying what we're doing. And that's why we keep coming back together every random week at late, late hours of the night to try to wrangle together new decks. That is very true. And to give back to our listeners, we still have a few of these playmats that we printed for Vegas. And for the month of November and December, shipping in the United States is a $2 flat rate. So order as many playmats as you'd like, and it's all the same. That's our way of giving back to you, because um, we're eating the shipping costs so that you can have a playmat from your favorite podcast. And of course, uh, lucky folks will get a free Deadeye Navigator and or Godfarrow's Gift, and some of them will be signed and or foil. In other news, the Mothership has changed a little bit to make it more friendly to content creators, and we've invited Blake Rasmussen on. He'll be on the show to talk about the changes to the Mothership and what it means to the community, because frankly, it's pretty big. And... Uh, once again, Sean sends his regrets, but hopefully once all of our work schedules settle down again, we can have a full hostful show. Sean has a a cadre of trained boars that he uses to scour the English countryside in search of truffles. Fancy. I thought he was raising a farm full of squirrels. (laughs) He could be doing both. Whichever the case is, they're certainly searching for Blake Rasmussen right now. (laughs) <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, just stick a truffle in Blake's pocket on the way out the door and see what happens. <laughs> a whole horde of pigs just kind of goes, Blake. <laughs> oh, so, God, that's so listen, funny. Yeah, you, you know, I, I really prefer the squirrel direction because the other, other one just sounds so boring. Oh. Uh, how long had you that? <laughs> how long did you have that one squirreled away? Uh, well i always like to come up with things people go nuts for (laughs) enough chattering all right it's it's time to to (laughs) metaphor this yeah (laughs) we're all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed for our main topic (laughs) Uh, (laughs) you know what gentlemen after all that nonsense all i can say to you is go to jail why because that's what our unstable preview card is. Aha, see, that's called a segue. <laughs> uh, court believe it. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, no, you're really going to jail now. So, uh, Phil, you haven't read one of these in a while. The Our preview card from Unstable is Go to Jail. All caps, too. Interesting. It's, um, <laughs> but that's because of the Monopoly card, right? It's a yep. one white mana. So one converted mana cost, white mana for an enchantment that reads, when go to jail enters the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls until go to jail leaves the battlefield. Pretty standard these days for a Yeah, but for one mana is amazing. Yeah, one mana is pretty good. Um... At the beginning of the upkeep of the exiled card's owner, that player rolls two six-sided dice. If he or she rolls doubles, sacrifice, go to jail. (laughs) So good. So, yeah. So this is a card that, obviously, it's a pacification effect, but it has its own removal built in. But only one in 36 times, so, you know, it's probably not going to hit. That'll never happen. Probably. Unstable has so many cards that let you manipulate your dice rolls, though. Yeah, Shivam, you're absolutely right. There are plenty of ways to to, uh, put a thumb on the scale, as it were. Hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. So one of our goals with Unstable was that we would be able to make some cards that might be attractive for Commander or Cube as well, because we don't just want the cards to be fun to read as little jokes but really enjoyable to actually take out and put in other things for your groups that are into into that kind of thing and this is an example of a card that i don't know i don't think this is crazy to put in a cuber commander deck necessarily it's a one mana removal spell with a pretty low chance of bad things happening you know Uh, yeah sometimes you're gonna get uh you're gonna get rolled on by this but a lot of times (laughs) this be a swords to plowshares or path to exile variant at least until that creature is long outclassed yeah, 
and uh, I don't know. This card just looks great. They, first off, I like that it's an enchantment and not an aura. Yeah, it's it, it goes into a number of decks, or can if your meta is willing to let you play with silver bordered cards. But it goes into a bunch of decks that um, really like enchantments. Like this is a really good card for Karametra, for example. I would use it without without a, a second thought. And this really, except for the die rolling, I guess, this could be a black bordered card. I'm very interested to see where most commander players end up landing on the silver border discussion because a lot of cards in unstable are, you know, if you look at them, if you, if you squint, you, you could see them in black border space. And most importantly, many of them don't do things that are just going to cause huge, huge frustrations at the game table. You know, if you look back to unhinged and mechanics like gotcha, while there was some funny stuff going on there, it made people just not want to talk during their games, which is exactly what you, the wrong thing to be doing for Commander. But cards like this are like, well, they're pretty close. They're, you know, they're functional magic cards with a bit of a bit of dice rolling built in. And I, I'll be very interested to see where the general heuristics end up for what is and isn't usable. But I would think that in many playgroups, a lot of the cards from Unstable are given the nod and the go-ahead to show up in decks. Yeah, like, I'll be honest... Um... I was very against silver border cards in general until the holiday cards started coming out. But even then, it was really dicey. Ah, dicey. But um, <laughs> the Thopter Pi Network. Dicey what network, you did there. Yeah, huh, you do. The Thopter Pi Network that came out last year was the first on card, I mean, silver border card that I was like, I really want to play this in a, in my actual deck. In fact, I built an entire deck based around that card. And then I looked at all the uh, previews we've had, and there have been like at least 15 cards that I've seen that I actively want to put into my commander decks. And so I think I actually want to try to convince the community to let us start using more silver border cards in our commander decks just because while we have these cards, it would suck if we can't use them in other places. And Commander has always been like the last refuge of cards they won't let you play anywhere else, like my beloved Soul Ring. So I think that we should do, we should try to get a uh, silver border acceptance in Commander. Maybe what we'll do is uh, go on, Gavin, and then I'll suggest this. It would make a lot of sense to, for example, make a list and say, here are the 100 or whatever the correct number is. Uh, cards that we feel are appropriate for commander and you know enough commander players ratify what's going on here it's one direction people people could take um i'm sure it's something that the rules committee has been chatting about too i would imagine that with unstable on the horizon that they've been thinking about it at least yeah mm -hmm. absolutely maybe if they do not act perhaps a certain humorous podcast and us could get together to talk about a list of appropriate cards hmm. yeah. i certainly think it would be neat to have a uh Commander Summit to discuss silver bordered cards, uh, perhaps. Yeah. But yeah, no, because some of these cards are just so cool. And I mean, Go to Jail, it seems to be like the most almost basic card of like, this is such a good Swords of Plowshares equivalent in our format. And I, man, I would love to use this in a deck. I mean, I'm a white player. I love anything that lets you just uh, make people take their creatures away. Yeah. And I love rolling dice as an old school D&D guy. So listeners, if you want to hear us create a list of appropriate unstable cards, and we would call it, uh, I don't know, the unstable commander <laughs> list, <laughs> uh, let us know by tweeting or writing to us, cast at commander at mtg.com, or any other way you can get a hold of us. Let us know, and um, if enough people think that uh, it's a good idea, we'll do it. Wouldn't it be better to call it like unmander? <laughs> uh, unmandering. I sense you should <laughs> use that hashtag, unmandarin. How do you like that? <laughs> now the art on this, and Gavin, I I know you're on your telephone, which is actually wonderful quality, by the way. But you must remember the art, which is some sort of orc or ogre, like with a single horn coming out of his head leaning up against the bars of a jail cell with his arms kind of going through, right, or his arm going through. What what caption would you suggest for that card? I would suggest go to jail. <laughs> See, I would be like, man, I wish I rolled free parking instead. 
<laughs> um, uh, let me think about this for a second. I'm sure there's something good. I used all my puns earlier, man. Yeah, we're we're all punned out. But you were saying earlier that this was a Monopoly inspired card, right? Like uh, inspired by the other famous Hasbro property. That was me. I because the card "Go to Jail" is like "Go to Jail," go directly to jail. Yeah, it is. Ex- I mean, it's exactly that, isn't it? Yeah. So I guess I guess I would say uh, I thought this was the community chest. <laughs> hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> And Gavin, since we knew you were coming on, we did some anagrams of the card name. <laughs> one of them is the first one, in fact, is Jail Togo, like the uh, to-go restaurant chain. <laughs> A jig loot. Uh, I, I just imagine people pulling up outside and they're like little buggies walking on into the uh, jail cafeteria, getting something, going back. Out <laughs> yeah, time, like Applebee's style. <laughs> An Applebee's. <laughs> a go, I jolt. <laughs> All right, yeah. listeners, All right. you make your own anagrams. Oh, dude, did you guys see the card really epic punch? Yeah. Which is Surak's two enemies punching each other? It's the greatest <laughs> go- Oh, my God. This set has changed my mind about onsets completely. You're you kidding. Know, I hate it on one and two. Except what? for the lands, unglued and unhinged were really, really good humorous articles to read and really really terrible experiences to play like i had a miserable time with those two sets i have a picture of me with uh mark rosewater standing in a uh, rabbit suit of some kind i believe at gen con socal uh, (laughs) where it was the unhinged i think pre-release and god the set read good and played bad but this set my god i want to like i am so excited for this it's not even funny Shivam, what are some of your favorite cards? Oh my God, Kevin! I have to tell you, there's a card that was revealed today called "Over My Dead Bodies," which is an enchantment <laughs> for four and two black, which uh, is maybe the greatest zombie card ever made. It's creature, really good. Yeah, creature cards in graveyards can attack and block as though they were on the battlefield, and can block or be blocked only by creature cards in graveyards. Are zombies in addition to their other types and have undeath touch which is if they would deal damage to a creature exile that creature instead creature cards in your graveyard have haste this is both the greatest like saltai card ever the greatest zombie card ever like all these dredger cards i mean it's great in dredge really terrible with delve but wow what a ballistic card all right guys you want to play an impromptu game yes (laughs) (laughs) take some guesses as to what this card's playtest name was. Oh, uh... If you guess a word correctly, I will tell you you guessed a word correctly. All right, I got one. Walking Dead. No. Oh! Um, Rise from Your Grave? Nope. Uh, Recycle? I don't know, what would you call this? I don't know, I, I'm at a loss, man. Like, All right, I'll give you a hint. The f- it's two words long. And the first word is zombie. Zombie. Zombie dance? Oh, you're getting close now. Zombie party. Really close. Oh. Really close. The uh, it combine uh, combine those two things together. Where where do you end up? Zombie dance party. <laughs> well, technically speaking, <laughs> yes, Shiva, that is true. Um, I don't know what is it. Zombie nightclub. What do you got? All right. If I was like a teenager zombie and I was in zombie school and there's like a zombie spectacle. prom, that's it. That's zombie it. prom. <laughs> <laughs> zombie prom. I'll note for for all those listeners out there that my current location is not Wizards of the Coast headquarters in Renton, Washington. It is a very small hotel room in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So it is possible I'm misremembering at this moment. But so if Rosewater tells you otherwise, I would believe Rosewater. But if I remember correctly, Zombie Prom was the playtest name for this card. Yeah. <laughs> as entertaining as Zombie Prom is, my favorite card from the set is the uh, green and white one that lets you call a call in a friend <laughs> better than one. That was my preview card on the Mothership. I got to show that off a couple days ago, and yeah, that card's a blast. It's also insanely powerful. Yeah. So. So wait, okay, so better than one, it cost uh, one green, one white. 
a person outside the game becomes your teammate. What? <laughs> like, what does that even mean? The clarification text there is important. Choose any number of cards in your hand on top of your library or on the battlefield under your control. Those cards become your teammates, hand, library, and permanence, respectively. That is insane. And also, who called it better than one and not phone a friend or tag team? <laughs> oh, my God. Like I think better than one is a great name because you get you get the double whammy. You look at it and you're like better than one doesn't that doesn't make any sense. But then oh, you but... then you're like oh the English saying two heads are better than one and that's ah doing. oh because this is creating you into a two headed giant form. That's right. Oh man, on my Twitter feed the other day we were when this was previewed, I was talking to some uh, followers who were like, this would be a really great format for like a video or something where you know you're tagging back and forth with people to try to like almost like a, a top chef style competition where it's like, Oh, okay, well this is the place eight go, go, go. And then the other person has to come and try to play a few turns and figure out what's going on. And then you tag somebody else in. And I love that these cards inspire you into ridiculous formats that should not exist <laughs> because that's just so good. In this case, it puts you into a format that does exist. <laughs> It's really pretty cool. Until you cast your second one, then you're playing yeah. three-headed giant. Oh, God. Start going crazy. Oh, my God. God, these cards are so bonkers. Son. So, better than one, I made sure to put in here because I do want to offer, I don't know how we would do it, <laughs> but if we're at a venue with anybody playing this and they have better than one, we will happily jump into the game with you as yes. your teammate. And in fact, because this is green and white, if Sean is at any venue where this <laughs> card is played, absolutely pull him in. We will be your teammate. Oh, man. I wanted to actually talk about another card that was in here that when I saw, I just lost my mind. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, this card is the black mythic called Summon the Pack, which is for seven and a black. So eight convert mana. Open a sealed magic booster pack, reveal all the cards, and put all the creature cards revealed this way onto the battlefield, and they are zombies in addition to your other types. <laughs> this is completely insane. Oh my god. I absolutely need to have this. Chaos is my favorite way to play magic. I love to have random packs just all the time. And everybody's like, oh, well, you know, you go for Legions because Legions was the all creature set. But Legions also had Phage the Untouchable, which if you put her into play without casting, you lose the game, <laughs> which is the greatest thing ever because you're playing the Flottery immediately. Yeah, you might get lucky and get one of those. Uh, there was a zombie in Legion set. Whenever a zombie comes into play, it drains the other opponent and gives you a life. So with 15 zombies coming into play, you would basically just nug them for 15. <laughs> but you could also just die. And the idea of that random, random chance is so good that, like, I love every minute of it. Even just hypothetically. Pro tip, Conspiracy 1 also contains Phage the Untouchable. Would not recommend. <laughs> <laughs> you mean it absolutely recommend. Not speaking from experience here or anything, but just, you know, <laughs> be careful with this. <laughs> In cube, one of my favorite cards is Booster Tutor. I think yes. many people have this as a cube favorite perennial all-star because what it basically does in cube is you open up a cube booster pack and select a card out of it and put it into your hand, which is incredibly strong from Unhinged. Mm -hmm. um, and I expect this to also be a cube card. It's in a very different way, but for seven mana, you're going to summon a bunch of cube-worthy creatures, which is bananas, but you never know what you're going to get. And that's a format that does have things like sweepers and ways to turn the game around. So... Sounds like a lot of fun to me. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty sweet. I might use uh, Rise of the Eldrazi. Oh, that would be fun too. <laughs> oh my God, I've never seen this preview card. I'm looking at the Mythic spoilers while I'm just scrolling through this. Very cryptic command? Yeah. Did you see this card? One yeah. in three blue and untap two permanents. Tap each permanent target player controls with exactly one word in its name. Discard all the cards in your hand and then draw that many cards or return target instant or sorcery from your graveyard to your hand. That seems like a real card to me. Whoa. This it's is some bonkers uh, stuff, man. It's a pretty good one. Gavin, do you have a favorite card? Oh, man. Yes, I definitely do. There's 
actually so many cards in Unstable that I love. And uh, at Wizards, uh, until very recently, we actually recently moved um, to a new area at Wizards that's much larger, and we all got fancy new standing desks and things like that. But before that, for many, many years, I sat directly next to Mark Rosewater. And a lot of that was during the design process for this. And it seemed like every couple days he would be giggling to himself as I walked into the office, and he would tell me, about some crazy thing that happened he did you know he'd swirl his chair around be like gavin what do you think about squirrel link and then we'd both start laughing right yeah he'd start telling people um and he did this for many many cards one that is memorable to me is kind slaver which <laughs> i love mind slaver i'm a big mind slaver fan and kind slaver and i believe this is correct i don't have it in front of me because i'm on a phone but correct me if i'm wrong it's a five-mana artifact with five tap sacrifice. A player from outside the game controls target player during his or her next turn. And yeah. neither you nor your opponent can advise that player on what to do during that player's next turn. That is it. Exactly. Yes. Oh, nailed it. I don't know the collector number. Don't ask me. But, uh, you know, it's pretty good. 150. <laughs> nailed it. Well, yeah, that would, I would actually, I, honestly, if you had asked, I would have just randomly guessed 150. That's crazy. I'm just that good. Anyway. <laughs> 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 so what i love is it's a mind slaver that you can't really, really predict what's going to happen and often i find what people do is kind of a halfway thing right it's like well don't really want to screw you over too much so we'll just kind of do a little something to me- mess with you you know something fun but i'll never forget a time and rosewater i actually wasn't there for this but rosewater's told the story many times and, and i like, like it a lot which is ben hayes i think it was uh, was the lead designer or of the or lead final designer of the set, one of the many, one of the three final lead designers that it had, and he was playing a match against somebody I can't remember who, and he activates Kind Slaver on his opponent, and he needs the other player to basically not do anything to be able to so to, for him to win the match the next turn, but if his opponent just attacks outright, he's going to lose. Okay, and so he looks around the R and D pit, looks around the R and D pit, looks around the R and D pit, and no one is there. Everyone's in meetings. And he needs someone to come over and resolve this card for him. And there's only one person, and it's Tim Ayton. And he's deep, deep, deep at work on an editing task. Like, he's got to get this task done. And Ben's like, hey, Tim, can you come over and help me? And Tim, like, reluctantly, like, walks over to, to help out and resolve the kind slaver. And Ben explains what go- goes on to him. And Tim's like, okay, sure. So he sits down within, like, two seconds. Turn all the, turns all the creatures sideways, gets up, walks away, goes back to his desk. And Ben's like, <laughs> you just killed me. And Tim's like, well, what's the valuable lesson about bugging me while I'm trying to do uh, my editing tasks? So, <laughs> carefully do that. Oh, <laughs> That's God. beautiful. Uh, and that oh, is, that is just the way Rosewater tells the story. I was not there personally, but I believe something like that occurred. Oh, man. <laughs> I can't wait to play this. This is going to yeah. be so cool. Yeah, this looks like a blast. Absolute we haven't blast. even talked about the weirdo, like, fusion creatures and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> We're going to have to have an episode where we talk about how useful these cards are going to be. But we'll have to do that another time. Well, everybody, thank you for hanging out with us. Uh, it's been wonderful. Listeners, you folks rock. And, uh, Gavin, uh, you're practically a regular on the show, a host, if you will, almost. But how can listeners reach you if they uh, haven't heard any of the last uh, two or three appearances? <laughs> well, well, pick your favorite social media method, search my name in it, and you'll probably find me. You can find me on Twitter at Gavin Verhey. You can find me on Instagram at Gavin Verhey. You can find me on Facebook. I think it's Gavin.Verhey or just search my name because that's way easier. Um, you can always email me at beyondbasicsmagic at gmail.com. Uh, my personal address is... <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't know. Just uh, carrier pigeons know where to find me. It's like, it's 2 a.m., man. Let the poor boy sleep. <laughs> the thing is, when I get on Commander in, my brain knows what happens. And it's it's revved up for like a three to four hour cycle here. <laughs> <laughs> so if we end now, I'm just going to be trying to fall asleep and thinking of witty things I can just say to Shivam. So you know, we better keep going. 
Well, yeah. I guess you should sit in your entirely normal armchair, grab your other thumb and your proper lab attire, and get ready for a long night as a willing test subject. Did you uh, pre-rate that, Shivan? Let, let's be honest. Look, man, I'm just a rules lawyer. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so, Gavin, if you do come up with anything you need to say to Shivam, just uh, record it into your phone, send us that file, and we'll figure out ways to splice it in. I just realized, by the way, that I'm in a hotel at PAX Unplugged probably surrounded by people who are trying to sleep right now and it's two in the morning <laughs> and, and they are getting the live version of this podcast it's great <laughs> i was like oh god if i'm in the room next to you i just like want to run a 10 foot pole through the wall maybe they're maybe, maybe they just appreciate some dulcet sounds as they're trying to fall asleep you know <laughs> so special thanks to our patrons who show their support already by donating so we can keep improving the show so without your continued support we could not do this without you now gavin you have already taken us out i don't know how many times i actually don't know how many times uh but would you like to do it again yes Yes, I would. Honestly, I, I can't believe it's here. After six years or more of working on this set, it's finally time for you to go out and play it. And if you love what you see in Unstable, the best way to make sure there's a fourth set, go and check it out. I mean, I really can't stress impo how important some of the stuff we're testing here is, too. Unsets have always been a breeding ground for future magic ideas. Split cards came from unsets, as an example. They were going to be an unglued two and got pulled out and used in invasion. And many, many, many times, full art lands, which are now a staple, have shown up in other things. Time and time again, stuff has come out of an unset and shown up in black border magic. So if you love host augment, if you love contraptions, if you love individual cards that you see, let us know by playing the set and giving us feedback because it is really valuable and could help craft the future of what magic does. Wow. Epic. Now I'm obligated to buy a case. Well, wow. this is the first <laughs> work. Yeah, it's good work. <laughs> this is the first set in a long time I, ever that I've actually wanted to buy that many packs of. Uh, man, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Anyways. Thanks, Gavin. And we will talk to you again next time. It has been my pleasure. Go mm -hmm. build some contraptions. <laughs> In my, in my free time, I just think about what I want to do with my night, and I realize nothing is better than being on Commanderin. <laughs>